Falu, today we're going to be diving into drum breaks, how I actually like to use them in my tracks, as well as a few different techniques on how to sample and chop them up. So without further ado, let's jump in. Okay, so for this first example, I wanted to show you my most useful method of using drum breaks, at least in my own tracks, this is the way that I use drum breaks most often. And that's simply just layering them in with your drums to add a little bit of character. So I'll often look for drum breaks so that I can add a little bit more texture into my drum loop. So let's just listen to this first. Let's just check this out. So this track is going for like a little bit of a down tempo sort of nostalgic feel. That's kind of the vibe of the drums. Let's just listen to these drums again. So a little bit of an experimental type beat, but I just wanted to bring your attention to this drum break here. I've simply just selected it and laid it in there and I've labeled it break texture because I'm really using this just for the texture of the loop. I'm not really using it for the actual syncopation. Uh, I've pretty much got everything in there. Let's just let's just play this again, and I'm going to uh, bypass this and turn it back on. You can see the difference of what this uh, loop is actually adding. So it's giving it heaps of that lo-fi sort of nostalgic character. And it also really just glues the track together. All of these elements in here feel really cohesive when we have that drum break in there. It's uh, adding a nice sort of environment for the drums to sit in. And I'm really just using it for its texture here, right? Okay, so I've just pulled up another little example here. And this is another sort of hip hop style beat. And let's just have a listen to this. So I've got a kick and I've got a kick layer here, right? And then I sort of got a snare and another snare layer that's giving it a bit of texture. There's already a bit of texture in there, but I think a breakbeat loop would actually sound really nice on this just to sort of glue everything together. So we're going to have a little look for a breakbeat loop. I've just got a pack here. This one has a whole bunch of different breakbeats in it. So let's... So this could be cool. Let's just drag this in and see what this sounds like. I'm also going to sort of just uh, EQ this... EQ this low end out, and then just take a little bit of this high end out as well. I just want to grab a high shelf, something like this. So you can hear that sort of crunchiness in there. That's sort of what I'm wanting to add to my loop. So let's have a listen. That actually sounds really cool. I'm going to duplicate this and turn this off now. And I'm going to look for another breakbeat loop that might work and sort of just A, B, see which one sounds the best. This one could work. That's sort of a really crunchy recording. So I'm just going to drag this one in and see what this one sounds like. Oh. I really like this little roll in here. There's a few ghost notes that work really well with my loop. So I'm going to have another listen here, but I'm going to bypass it and turn it on just so you have a little bit of context reference. That's out. Just really fills out the space and actually glues the loop together. So let's have a listen to this with this little bass loop in here as well. And maybe I can listen to the other loop that we have here as well. So they both work. They're offering slightly different characters. And we're just sort of including them quietly in the background to add a little bit of texture and glue all of our elements together. Speaking of layering, another really cool thing that you can layer with your drums are Foley sounds. So I left a link in the description to a free sample pack that you can grab. It has a whole bunch of really organic sort of natural sounding field recording. So if you want to grab that one, link's in the description. So when it comes to chopping up breakbeat loops, there's a whole bunch of different ways you can do it. First of all, I'm using breakbeat loops from sample swap. It's like a free website where you can download samples that you like and it has a really cool collection of breakbeat samples 
uh, all of these in here, right? Uh, but I have these two drum break loops here. I think maybe we'll start off with this second one here. And we're just gonna start slicing this up in audio. So uh, one really fun way to do it uh, in audio is to simply just grab sections of the loop and say, I've got, this is a kick drum, right? And I could just paste that somewhere else. But what I can do then is sort of just extend out these boundaries here because each little snippet is gonna save all of the information in the loop there going to save all of that information. So it's fun to just sort of paste things around, uh, extend boundaries like this and like this and see what different rhythms you can create and little chops that you can create. It's a really fun way to mess around with breakbeat loops. So let's have a listen to this. That's already a really cool rhythm as is. Maybe I could grab this little open hi-hat here and try and put that somewhere. Maybe put that here, extend it out and see what happens. Maybe I can put this snare over here. Maybe I can extend this boundary out a little bit, see what happens. What I love doing as well is sort of just grabbing sections like this and just nudging them over to the left or over to the right and sort of changing the groove a bit and then extending the boundary out again and seeing what interesting rhythms you can create from that. That's pretty cool. So that's one way of doing it. I find it a really fun method to create some interesting different rhythms as well. What you can also do, which is essentially the same thing, but it's just a different way of looking at it, is I'm actually gonna make some slices. So I'm gonna highlight this section and hit Command E, and then I'm gonna highlight this section and hit Command E as well. And then I'm gonna start dragging these different slices onto different tracks like this. And maybe I'll group these as well, Command G. And now we can do the exact same thing, but we got different slices on different sections. This also allows you to process each one of these slices separately. If you wanted to just have your kick drums in this group up here, you could do that and sort of like drag all the slices away and just have my like kick drums up here, something like this. And then I could like process my kick drums differently to the snares. So you could separate all of the elements into different tracks and then process them slightly differently. This is just another way of looking at it really. So my preference for how I like to chop up my drum breaks is by simply just dragging it into a MIDI clip. So I've just got this MIDI clip here. I've just clicked on it. I'm going to drag it down here and that's going to turn it into a simpler device. And I'm going to hit this little slice button here and that's going to slice by the transients. So you could sort of play each transient. But in fact, I'm going to go to the slice by drop down menu and go into beat and my divisions are set to quarter notes. So now this is a really easy way to mess around with our drum break rhythm. So you can sort of just mess around and play with them live. You can also just grab a MIDI clip, which is the same length as this drum break here. And I'm going to, from C1, start to program in some quarter notes that are sort of ascending here. And that's going to trigger the actual slices here. And what that allows us to do is sort of mess around with this breakbeat loop from a different visual way again. So maybe I could drag this one up and this one down, flip these over. Maybe I could duplicate this one. So and you can sort of duplicate sections of it and then play around with velocity and stuff like this. Maybe something like this. That's kind of a cool rhythm. So if I go back to this view, you can see what's happening down here as well. 
I really love the simplicity of this because the reality is when you're using a like a vintage sampler or something like this, they had really basic controls of how they were chopping things up anyway. So using really simple sampling devices like this is a really fun way of working with it, but you can get more control as well. So I can change this to eighth note divisions and sort of mess around with these. So I'm just going to um, delete these MIDI notes here and make eighth notes this time and just make them ascending from C1 just like we did the last ones, something like this. And so then we can just mess around with these and see what rhythms we can create by just dragging these different bars around. So let's just see what this does. So I know this G here is going to be the open hi-hat, so I can drag that up. I'm also noticing that some of our slices are a little bit off, so I can uh, adjust these boundaries here to make sure that they're sort of hitting in the right spots. It's something like this. And then, of course, you can always go in here and make some little repeats and sort of mess around with these things on a smaller level. Maybe another kick drum here. One more little bonus tip that I like doing is sort of just messing around with these slice boundaries and seeing what results come about. So maybe if I move this over like this. <laughs> Making some very interesting rhythms now. So maybe something like this. What about this? Oh, I really like that rhythm. So some really interesting things you can do by messing around with these slice boundaries here as well. So I'm going to show you uh, one more way to do it. And this is using a little bit of warping as well. So this is uh, really good if you want to fix up your drum break before you actually sample it into MIDI or slice it into MIDI. So I've got this break beat here. Right. And the timing on this one is actually really good. Uh, it's already pretty on the grid, but as a purpose of example, if it was a little bit more loose with its timing, I'm, I'm holding command on my keyboard or control if you're on Windows. And if you double click here, it's actually gonna make three. It's gonna make three warp markers at once. So this is just more efficient. I'm just gonna make a warp marker for every single transient. Just double click, double click, and just keep doing this. And then once we've done that, what we can do is any transit that we want to straighten up onto the grid, I can just go like this and sort of just straighten it up, make sure it's on the grid. That just makes it a little bit easier for you to slice it. Or if it's a little bit out of time, you can do that. And that's just going to make it easier to sort of fit with your track. So again, this breakbeat is really good. It's already I don't really need to fix it up. But if it did need fixing, that's how I would do it. And also, I'm going to look in here and sort of just put another warp marker here, uh, just because we've got a little hi-hat there, which is nice. And so now what I can do is right-click this and hit Slice to New MIDI Track. This is a really powerful function that we have in Ableton. And we can create one slice per warp marker. So I could do warp marker, I, do, I could do transients. But in this case, I want to do warp markers because I've already made all these warp markers down here. I'm going to hit OK. And this will spit out this MIDI file, which has one MIDI note per one of these warp markers. And it also slices up every single one of our warp markers into a different clip here and just maps a whole bunch of things here so we can sort of change the envelope of these sounds if we want to. So this is a cool way of getting really technical with chopping up your drum breaks. So you can use this headphone icon over here to sort of... I'm going to turn the loop length down here and that's just going to make it so it doesn't loop. You can sort of listen to each one of your transients and then sort of just make adjustments based on that. So we could even loop sections if I wanted to do that. So maybe something like this. And we just have a lot of control over every single transient now. So I could grab stuff from over here and sort of just see what that sounds like.
So this technique is a little bit more complex, but it offers you a lot more control over all of the different sounds in the break beat. If you wanted to change the actual rhythm of the drum break, you can do that using this technique. And you can really just get in there and mangle and create the drum break to be exactly as you want it. So I hope you've enjoyed these few different techniques on how to use drum breaks in your tracks. There's so many different ways to use them and slice them up. So I'm interested to hear your favorite techniques. So if you've got a favorite technique on how you like to use drum breaks, leave them in the comments below and I'll have a read. Otherwise, if you enjoyed the video, remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one.